Welcome back, everybody. It is time for um, another question about work. Uh, and if you're new, I'm Roy, and Min and I are both startup investors in the future of work, and Hunter, our guest, our very special guest for our last, uh, our last This Is Not Advice of 2020, because tomorrow I will turn off and protect some uninterrupted time, which we will talk about, um, uh, is today. What day is it, Min? Are we 120? What are we, what are we today? Today is 121. And for those of you who um, may not yet know about Hunter, uh, you can find him at Twitter at Hunter Walk. Um, he is a, an investor at Founder, right? Co-founder of Homebrew. Um, and we feel really lucky to have gotten to invest in, co-invest in some awesome companies together. Um, and I just want to say, one of the people whose path through tech I took many lessons from along the way, and Hunter and I have talked about this, from Second Life, um, one of the more inspirational companies in terms of how it did its own future of work practices within the company and took lots of lessons from it to driving product and other areas at YouTube and now getting to, like I think we made the transition to being investors kind of at the same time, so. We um, did. That's we all right, Min, sorry, question and, and Hunter's uh, Hunter take on it. I'll shut up. No, no problem. Uh, so today, you know, everyone's kind of starting to prepare for the holidays and think about 2021. And Hunter, you had this blog post, which we'll share later, about killing all your meetings uh, and resetting your calendar for 2021. And so we thought for today we could ask you the question, how do I protect my uninterrupted time when it feels like a lot of my meetings are probably going to be super important? Well, thanks for having me on, especially the holiday edition. Uh, I understand that a lot of people might consider themselves to be meeting or schedule takers versus schedule makers, right? So everybody has some degree of agency control over their calendars. Um, when they do things, other people um, have meetings dropped on them and maybe can't always move them around. But I think the idea of believing your time is very important and that at any moment, your calendar is probably not optimized for the type of work you need to get done. A range of collaborative work with people, but also periods of deep work where you can have alone time to concentrate, to be creative, to work on things that don't really fit in 15 to 20 to 30 minute slots, you know, between one-on-ones or team check-ins or things like that. So yeah, I'm a believer that if you can, start with a blank slate and rebuild. Um, <laughs> Because what you'll find is that you're by the end of the year, your calendar probably looks like you know an old man's you know old man's teeth, right? Like lots of holes, like some that are healthy, some aren't. So I want I want you to have a beautiful, fresh set of teeth by the beginning of the year. Um, meetings that matter, large stretches of uh, time to get work done. And we can talk a little bit about like, how do you get there, for example? Yeah, I mean, look, so so in budgeting, uh, this was once called the zero-based budgeting practice mm -hmm. of like, clear it all out instead of starting with the default of what you spent on the year before. I'm just curious, when you think about what you add in, when you're making your savvy choices about like what healthy teeth look like, what are some of the things you're proud to add in? And what are some of the things that you struggle with? Like, what are some examples of things that where the rubber hits the road on actual decisions or the teeth hit each other on yeah. that? So I think there's always two types of um, refactoring that I end up working on. One is reoccurring meetings. So by the end of a year, I've had a number of reoccurring meetings, some internal, some with the founders we back. Because they get added, changed incrementally throughout the year, they're usually sort of scattershot across the day. Some of them are weekly when they don't need to be, some are hour long and you have enough track record to now see that maybe they should be 45 minutes or 30 minutes. On the flip side, sometimes you have that meeting that's only been scheduled for half an hour and only always runs 10 minutes late. And so it's time to either reconcile whether or not you can get that work done in 30 minutes or maybe you should hold aside actually 45. So what I look at, I look at those and I just sort of set it up in a spreadsheet, you know, and it's kind of who's it with, how often is it happening, um, how uh, long is the duration? And I'll start to sort of tweak like, okay, if I had full control over this, what would I do? Then I would try to set up some bounding boxes on my calendar where I can group those together. So do some of those things back to back. So I don't have to have these half hour, 45 minute breaks in between um, a bunch of one-on-ones that aren't really good for much besides working out the top of my, you know, working out of the top of your inbox, which is, you know, a, a fake productivity anyway. Um, the second type is, um, setting up stretches where you're trying to do no meetings, right? 
I think everybody has done some variation of this. They've tried to draw a bounding box on their calendar that says no meetings or things like that. And what'll happen is they get scheduled over or or or, or you start, you know. Right, you start you being less protective of it. So I, I have two tricks there. Um, yes, please, this is good. Now we're getting, now we're getting to the, to where the one, cheap one is, one is like, um, make up imaginary friends, like, <laughs> but like meeting, uh, meeting with so-and-so, right? People are much less likely to schedule over your whole time if they think it's another meeting. So the difference between just like DNB, do not book, you know, versus hold for work versus like meeting with Roy, where Roy is, you know, not the wonderful you know, person, but like I take friends. Meeting with Roy and on my own things, because so often you get those ghost <laughs> uh, items where somebody else sends you something and their thing says meeting with Hunter because that's what it is in their calendar. Oh, I'm very good at etiquette. I always put my name first. So it's yeah, like, of course, Hunter, I'm I'm actually, let's use the error to our advantage. Look, put there's in calendar meeting with Hunter. It's true. I don't, I don't recommend like a standing meeting that says funeral. That's kind of a little dark. But yeah. if you need like, if you need sure. four hours one day and but instead like, of putting do not book, just put like, you know, funeral or something like that. Nobody yeah. will schedule over it. Does um, that mean on your own? So actually you were gonna get to another trick. Cause to me, the biggest problem is not other people not respecting my own boundaries. It's me not respecting my own boundaries. Yes, I violate my own boundaries all the time. And then I, we, then we have to have a conversation. Um, well, how does the, that work? So what I try to do there is, I, 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 um, I, I now have enough self-awareness to understand what times of day I am most likely to have good focus or attention. And it's not arbitrary. It's basically I'm good in mornings. And so what mm -hmm. I, I'm good in mornings. So what I try to do is put those times in the morning, make sure that my EA isn't scheduling meetings, let's say before 10, unless I need them. And then boxing off that time. I'm working off a list of my to do's that I've also kind of put 30, you know, 30, 60, 60 plus against. And so I'm sort of saying, okay, I have two hours. I'm picking two 60 minute tasks. So I'm going into those, not with some notion of, oh, I have two hours of deep work. What do I want to do? But I, I'm looking at it as like a puzzle where I have my puzzle pieces and then I'm assigning myself. Sometimes I'll even do those as bounding boxes on the calendar within my like two hour block where I'm like, oh, this is 30 minutes for resume screening. This is 30 minutes for, you know, so I'm scheduling the time. The, the less, the more transitions I have, the more that there's a, oh, I just finished this, but I have an hour left in my do not, you know deep work time, but I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. The more likely I am to bail, I'm gonna go open up a browser window, I'm gonna start walking around. So yeah. if, I, if I can pre-build, if I can set it aside at a time when I know I'm gonna be productive and then pre-build my, my deep work puzzle, um, I, I, I stick with it more than if it's you know later in the day or um, or I haven't yet pre-thought what I'm gonna use that time for. I love the idea and I've never considered it before, which feels stupid. I feel like now I'm just getting smarter of taking my deep work items and just adding a time estimate to that. Yeah. Um, because otherwise it's like what order and loose importance. I think that's really smart. Sometimes um, I give myself a little treat too. I mean, look, we're all adults, but like a cookie midway through your deep work period, sometimes you deserve it. Yeah. Right, we are going Give our listeners the cookie of reflecting on the not advice um, that uh, that they have just been given, and I think that we could go really deep on this. I would love, like Hunter, I think that your productivity junkiness is something that um, that I just love to mine more and talk more about. Um, Min, anything else you want to share before we wrap? No, I didn't think we would ever be talking about teeth on an episode of this on advice and so you know a little shout out to bowery um hunter always have to promote a portfolio company <laughs> um <laughs> i'll drop the link oh sorry go ahead Roy. no i was just thinking hunter i was oh, well. uh, do this, do it. it's always a, an awkward treat when people we know really well we get to come and do this with for a second because it's just such a different context and i'm just grateful that you are uh, a person who is always up for it I am grateful that all of you exist. I enjoy collaborating, even for short bits of time where I suggest lying about funerals in order to gain as a productivity hack. Uh, and I hope everybody has a wonderful last few weeks of the year. We'll see you for This Is Not Advice in the new year, everyone. See you in the new year to be continued. Bye.